Hi, uh, good morning. This is Meredith Lego. And um, in the last few videos, I've been doing a series of teachings um, on the concept of ascension and kind of getting into the fundamentals of how that actually happens. And much of the teachings I've been able to channel from an ascended master um, named Polarian, who basically has been able to ascend the reincarnational pattern. And I've been able to connect to his energy through a process called quantum entanglement. And oftentimes um, he tends to focus on like loftier uh, topics that don't necessarily get into the day-to-day -day drama that we experience in the world. Um, so even if I ask him about stuff that's going on in the world, he says um, kind of snap out of it and see the bigger picture. <laughs> but um, sometimes, you know, I like to try and connect the dots on the stuff that he's teaching versus stuff that's going on in the world. And I wanted to sort of break from sharing a teaching that he's done to um, talk about sort of connecting the dots on various things that I see going on versus the teachings that I've had, as well as some of the um, kind of experiences that I've had. I haven't got, since I've just started my video um, series, I haven't gotten to um, sharing some of the really, really um, interesting um I guess you could say uh, psychic sensitivity experiences that I've had since I've started to uh, sort of awaken those senses. Um, but they do play into the entire learning process. So I'm gonna start sharing them a little bit more and more. But I just finished a, a run through the neighborhood and had a chance to sort of uh, clear my head and think about a bunch of things. And I wanted to just um, kind of share my thinking of connecting the dots between um, some, of, some of the videos that I've done as well as something that's relatively new and emerging uh, today in our society, which is the whole concept of Facebook's new metaverse, as well as connecting that to the concept of the med beds, which I just did a video on, um, I don't know, maybe four weeks ago or so, or three or four weeks ago, as well as the concept of a quote, dulled bed. And a dulled bed basically stands for an acronym of dream a little dream of me, but essentially, um, yeah, it's kind of dream within a dream, if you will. Um, so those things are all connected together. So just to back up, um, if you haven't heard, um, Metaverse is basically the new brand of uh, Facebook. Um, obviously they experienced some issues, which um, you know kind of put them in a negative perception in the market and sort of repositioned or rebranded themselves and emerged a new technology at the same time or launched a new technology which is basically a virtual reality world if you will um, and this this virtual reality world is uh you know expected to be quite big in the sense that you've already have a ton of people already investing physical dollars into different sort of um scenarios or i guess you could say um real estates that they can invest in. So people are like paying real dollars to buy houses in this virtual reality world. And as an aside, I, I actually do work with an outsourced sales and marketing company sort of as my day job. And um, my company is in the process of already trying to figure out how to create consumer experiences and to brand consumer packaged goods and technology companies inside this virtual reality world. So they're already like figuring out how to lay out um, real estate for like branding experiences and um, advertising side of this world. So it's, um, that's where a lot of companies see a huge future growth potential. I mean, it's just the reality and, um, you know, being on the business side, it's kind of a no brainer that that's where you would seek another lens of growth. But I wanted to, um, so I wanted to bring that up sort of as a backdrop to um, connecting it to some of the videos that I've done in the past. So I've done, um, you know, so if you watch the videos and I highly encourage you to watch from the very beginning, basically Master Hilarion has set up the, the concept or the, the understanding that we essentially live in almost a virtual holographic simulation. Um, and, and basically within the simulation consciousness, is enabled to be put into a situation where you can manipulate your reality based upon your intentions and your thoughts, um, or your thoughts, your intentions. And as they're magnified by emotion, that essentially sends off sort of um, a sound vibrational signal that can then essentially um, construct uh, patterns of uh, you know various electrons and atoms, basically construct a reality around you. Um, as an aside, one of the things I wanted to say is that after I got the lesson on the whole concept of sort of the black hole, white hole construct or the torsion uh, field construct, and I'll try and put several of these videos in, in the description as links, I, I was guided by my guides, if you will, 
to find uh, probably about a month later, uh, it just, you know, uh, basically came in front of me in three different instances on, um, I want to say on Twitter or YouTube or something like that, a CIA white paper that was written a long time ago that basically um, said, hey, by the way, we likely live in a holographic simulation. So it's quite known. Um, I guess even the CIA had studied it and sort of uh, known about it. Um, but it was now just coming forward. So I think that's an interesting scenario about how when, when people are ready, when their frequency is ready, they sort of start to unlock the keys of getting access to certain information. And that's just one of them that I unlocked to be able to not down, not only download the information from um, sort of from, uh, you know, Ascended Master, but also then to have that information kind of show up and be handed to me in very various electronic forms. But um, that being said, um, you know, obviously I was getting these experiences and learning about it. Um, at the same time, um, I earlier, early, I think earlier than I actually was um, being handed these lessons, um, I had um, some very, very interesting experiences happen to me. Um, to, to set up these experiences, I want to talk about something that I had been doing um, prior to that to uh, work on getting my body and my emotions sort of at a higher vibrational frequency. So probably, I don't know, three, four years ago, I, start, I, I just felt the urge that I needed to work on increasing my vibration. I didn't know why entirely. I just something that was kind of an inner drive that I knew I had to do it. So that was kind of the turn on of kind of Clara, Clara cognizance around it. But essentially, I, I started to, um, um, like actually on one, one day, I decided to um, stop drinking alcohol. And it's not like I drank a lot, maybe a little bit on the weekends, but I stopped that. I stopped drinking any caffeine that I was drinking and I decided to go vegetarian. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was in an effort to essentially um, kind of clean up my body and um, start to take in more whole foods like fruits and vegetables. I essentially then went on um, a year long journey of essentially stopping all processed food and um, sugar. <clears throat> and really just sticking to um, like fruits and vegetables as much as possible. But through that process, I really um, was taking in like the highest vibrational quality foods. And with that, about a year later, um, I, I had an experience where, so I was, I was kind of vibrating at a high level. Um, since then, I, I, my diet kind of broke and it, it dive, dive, dove down a little bit, but, but um, I was, it was in the middle of the night and um, I think I had gotten up to go to the bathroom and came back. Um, by then I was highly connected with Hilarion and actually starting to have some pretty interesting, um, I guess you could say portal travel experiences. And I'll, I'll be happy to share those in other videos. But in this experience, I laid back down into bed and I looked over, so I was wide awake. You know, I was not dreaming, I was wide awake. I looked over to my side <clears throat> and I basically saw, um, a lady, um, I want to say she looked like she was in her 30s, but she was very etheric in the sense that um, if you've ever seen like the Star Wars movies where um, like uh, like Master Yoda or Obi-Wan Kenobi comes back to Luke after they've died and they kind of look shimmery and like blue all over, that's what she looked like. So she was like an etheric shimmery image. Um, you know, I was kind of uh, laying down in bed, just looking over to the side, watching this, observing, going, holy crap, we know <laughs> this is, I can't believe this is happening. But she um, like had brown hair to her shoulders. She was fair skinned, um, kind of reminded me of what you'd think Snow White would look like. So very fair skin with, you know, uh, mild freckles on her cheeks. Um, she was wearing a violet uh, shirt. It, it looked like a silk material, but it was very like violet purple. And um, she was sitting at a holographic console, like almost reminded me of, of like a nurse's station where you've got a console with screens, only her console was flat and it was um, sort of holographic and 3D, if you will. It was projecting 3D images. And it's, I, I sort of got the sense that she was observing over many people, if you will. And I was one of them and I somehow knew that. And um, I'm just watching her trying not to, um, I guess, changed my state of consciousness in the moment because I was fascinated by this. And then she saw that I saw her, like she noticed that I was watching her. And without me even seeing how she moved over to be over me, all of a sudden her face was right over my face. So I was lying in bed, her face was right over my face and she was smiling and she was super, super pleasant looking. 
um, in the sense that she looked like she was very, very nice and loving. Um, and she kind of reached her hand up over my head, if you will, and started like looking like she was hitting buttons. Um, and all of a sudden I was out, I was out cold. Um, now that, that was pretty interesting. Um, I, I happen to have some relatives who are, uh, very, very, I would say, um, connected into, um, astral travel and, uh, to having been able to sort of, um, maneuver their bodies into different dimensions. Um, I, I actually only started, um, uh, connecting and learning from them about these topics. I want to say the last three years or so, but, um, they did describe to me, um, as I was going through my learning journey and did affirm also what I learned from Ascended Master Hilarion, that there are essentially these concepts of kind of med beds or they call them impact beds or dulled beds. They um, refer to dream a little dream of me, where essentially we're in a situation of in beds and simulations at some other location and our consciousness is entered into kind of this um, three density reality, if you will. <clears throat> So um, what, what that relative said to me is essentially, you almost like your vibrational frequency had gotten to such a high level that you almost were able to wake up from the experience. Now, if I had waken up, I would have died in this reality. Um, so uh, probably better that it wasn't because I've got kids and a family and stuff like that. But um, you know, that, that, that kind of was the experience of, of what he was indicating to me um, was going on. <clears throat> so that that was uh, kind of one one thing that I wanted to first set as a backdrop before uh, getting back to the whole Facebook metaverse, metaverse concept. But I also want to set up a second experience that I had. Now this one was more in a dream time. And often what I found is that guides um, guides actually do reach out to you very much in dream time because you're sort of at the right um, sort of in some some senses you're kind of in your astral body but essentially you're able to connect in a different dimensional plane so if you're on an awakening journey it's very important that you start to learn how to become more lucid in your dream experiences because um, you can turn a lucid dream very much into a, a true astral experience where you're very conscious you're very aware of your decision making um, and you can kind of go anywhere with a thought with a thought um, in, in that moment, but you can consciously do it. So in this particular experience, I, I was um, I was actually astral um, in the sense that I, it wasn't a dream. I was very much in an astral uh, experience and I found myself um, having experiences almost like the movie Inception. If you've ever seen that, that's a movie with, um, I think it's Leonardo DiCaprio, but essentially they, they uh, have a technology that allows them to sort of go into dreams um, and sort of uh, manipulate sort of scenarios within um, dreams and other people's dreams. And they also are able to kind of create layers of dreams within dreams within dreams so they can kind of go deeper into the dream um, time. And half the battle is trying to figure out how to get back up and ascend out of that deeper layer. Um, but in this experience, I was, I was going, I was um, finding myself sort of waking up and then realizing that I was still in a dream and then waking up and realizing that I was still within a dream. And it's almost like um, a multi-layered onion where you're, you're slowly trying to go up and up and up. And um, as this was happening, I was lucid in the experience and um, I had guides with me and they basically said, oh, you figured it out. That's that's what this is all about for you to figure out how to wake up, how to wake up from this situation so that you can wake up in the next situation. So what that basically implied is that, you know, our job in this life is to figure out how to wake up out of the situation. Um, and as part of that, they also explained to me and actually showed me technology that they use in order to essentially, um, and I think I described this in the last video, but they have technology that they essentially use to, um, I guess you could put in uh, virtual reality players or characters that we can interact with, um, both for con uh, concepts of sort of learning and growing, but um, you know, so some of it is real, some of it is kind of like constructs that they create inside of the simulation. Oh, my doggy's coming here to play with me. Um, so that that was very interesting. So they they literally were showing me the technologies that are used to kind of underpin this whole thing. 
Um, now with those two um, backdrops in mind, the fact that, okay, we're kind of already settled into a simulation number two and that there's sort of, um, there was this at least lesson, and I'm not sure if, if the reality is, is that we're in multi-layered simulations or the fact that, you know, it was a message to try and wake up from this one um, going forward, similar to how I almost woke up from um, the experience of seeing that uh, lady or that guide, I would call her operator or guide in my bedroom. Um, Cause I, as an aside, did um, get together with, um, let's say uh, a reader, if you will. And um, it was confirmed that it was definitely a guide. So I would consider that person in my room to be like a, the operator, um, maybe similar in the movie Avatar, where you've kind of got that whole team of scientists sort of watching those individuals going into the Avatar reality, um, might be the same thing. but. So she, um, you know, they're, they're essentially um, kind of laying that out for me as, as a teaching and as a, as a lesson of sort of wake up. And um, now I want to go back to the whole concept of the Facebook met metaverse. So this is a situation where, where um, you know, a company is setting up a technology for us to go into a virtual reality inside of an existing virtual reality that we're already in. And so essentially it's descending consciousness as opposed to ascending consciousness. And, um, you know, it kind of takes us down a layer, if you will. So it takes us a level, a level deeper within the onion, um, if, if you use that analogy. And it creates another dream within the dream scenario. And so, um, you know, I, I'm, obvious, <laughs> I'm obviously here, I've set up this uh, whole YouTube video to talk about ascension science so that we can learn to sort of wake up and take control of our being, can take control of our consciousness, take control of reality, and become truly accountable sovereign beings, understanding who we truly are, which is um, a connection to all that is. We aren't separate from anything. And um, so, you know, obviously everybody has free will choice. And one of my future videos is going to be on the concept, if I don't post this one before or after, basically I'm about to post one on the concept of free will choice. And it's so important for consciousness to learn from through so you know everybody has a choice of how to engage in this experience that we call life um, one of them could be starting to you know engage more with the experience of the metaverse you know that's up to you but I think what I'm being guided to say here is that it, it you know it can take you a level deeper um, into consciousness so a, possibly a level lower um, so it's it's your choice um, what I've been guided to uh, learn from Master Hilarion is that Really everything that you need to do, everything that you're trying to seek if you're searching for something really is within, it's within you. Um, so stop looking externally, um, stop trying to seek through technology and um, everything that you need to seek is truly within. Um, in fact, we have the ability to travel anywhere we want to <laughs> just by going within. I've, I've, I've done it before. Um, maybe you can't take your physical body there, but you can take consciousness there. You can have experiences uh, by simply going within. And um, some people have in fact mastered how to take their bodies with them. Um, so just, you know, we're incredibly uh, uh, advanced beings and we have advanced bodies. Um, so, um, you know, better to use your own, your own technology instead of external technology. Um, the other kind of message that I thought was interesting that tied to this concept. Now, this is a message that Hilarion did give to me and that I did channel um, actually earlier this year is that heaven. Um, so this is kind of like messed up writing that I have before I've typed it up so I may stumble over the words, but heaven is in the heart of all men, a place of being, not a physical destination. So again, heaven is in the hearts of men or, you know, obviously women. It's not a place. It's not a physical destination. Find your heaven by letting go of those fears and emotions that bind you in handcuffs to a dense reality. Free your passion, uh, free your passions and joys, and soon your outer world will reflect your inner world. Um, so again, it's it's just another reminder that um, you know it's. It's all that, all those triggers, all those traumas, um, all those fears that, that we tend to hold on to, that creates denser sort of emotional vibrational patterns as uh, we sort of construct our bodies, because um, really our bodies are construction of our consciousness. Um, and it's really holding us on to a very dense pattern of reality. 
I mean, we're, we, we elected to be sort of in this um, kind of three density or third density construct, uh, but we very much have the ability to sort of rise above it. Um, and the idea is to go within, um, execute what brings you the greatest joys and passion, and ultimately um, your outer world's gonna um, kind of mirror or reflect your inner world. Um, but, um, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned from this is that I'm likely not going to engage as much with the metaverse technology um, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to go in the other direction. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to share that perspective. Um, and I hope, I hope you uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.